ones you're seeing here. Sorry, that was me. <laughs> um. Okay, so uh, just to give you, is everyone ready for uh, for action? And sure. Let's get sure. the party going. Okay, um, so so just an overview. This is the outliner up here, and here's the camera. Why am I only seeing part of your screen? There's like a black block on the left oh, side. Yeah, drag it over a little bit. Yeah, well, that's, that's better. better. How's that? That's good. Good. Yeah. But now I've I've got this uh, strip of uh, videos of you guys here. I guess I could minimize that. Yeah, you can minimize that. Is that the bottom um, track? I can see all your faces here. Yeah. So. Um, you should be able to minimize it. Um, for me, yeah, there's says, like. It says, yeah, it says hi thumbnail video. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there it is. All right. Alrighty, so here's the uh, camera here, and uh, it's right here. And it's similar to a camera in uh, the real world, you just, if you want to check out the properties of the camera, you go down to this little green camera icon, you click on that. And it has focal length, and it has depth of field, like a real camera. Mm -hmm. And aperture, f-stop, uh, everything you could want in a virtual camera. And, uh, and now the, the light is right here. And the light, uh, as if you go over here, it's a little light bulb uh, icon here. You can see there are different types of lights. Right now it's a point light. You can change it to be a sun or a spotlight or an area light, like, like in a real TV studio or movie studio, and you can change the color of the light right there. Um, Is this how you initially see it when you open the project, or do you have to add a camera, do you have to add a light? No, it, it comes with a default camera and a default light, but you can add extra lights too. I mean, uh, like what, the way you do that is go to add, and they go down to light. And let's say you want to add a, I don't know, like a spotlight. And then uh, you move that around. And, uh, rotate it like that. So how are you rotating it and moving it like that? Oh, well, the, uh, the, the shortcut for doing it is over here, this widget. You click on that and you get all these, uh, you know, bar circles, which you can drag and, and up here you see the, this widget here has, has green for Y, red for X and blue for Z. So if you grab the, the blue ring, it'll rotate around the Z and so on. And, uh, hmm. But there's a key, the key, the key, I was using a keyboard shortcut, which is uh, R for rotate. And that's- You hold cool. down R or no, just, just press tap R, it? Just, okay. press, just tap R. And if you, want to constrain, if you want to constrain it to an axis, what you do is you hit R, and then like X, and it'll constrain it to the X axis. Hmm. Or R and then Y, it'll constrain it to the Y axis. And, so uh, what else? Um, if you want to move it, you can just grab one of these uh, arrows, move it around, and. Um, okay, so it's kind of like we're looking at each camera, each light, each cube. There, like they're all objects, and we can move each object in three D space. Exactly. Yeah. And so you can. Uh, select the cube by left clicking on it. And so you can move it around by clicking on one of these arrows like the X axis or the Y axis. So but when you animate, are you doing this frame by frame like normal animation or can you just- I, I, I use, uh, key, use keyframes. Like mm -hmm. I, you know, place it, do first keyframe it on came frame one and then uh, scrub up to frame 50 or 60 or whatever, and then 
put, you know, move it, move the object and insert another keyframe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the shortcut for moving an object is G, G for grab, and you can just move it around like that. And, and, and just like rotate, if you hit G and then X, it'll constrain it to the X axis. Or G and Y, it'll constrain it to the Y axis. And now, uh, to, if you want to get a different view of the object, what you do is you hold down the middle mouse button and you, and you can rotate the mouse right and left and you can, that rotates the scene. What if you have like a trackpad? If you have a trackpad, well, um, zooming, uh, if you, for zooming in, you need like the uh, plus and minus key on the number mm -hmm. pad, on, on the numpad. Like to do this, you need the plus and minus key, mm. which I'm, I'm doing using the, the middle mouse button, which is a scrolling button. And um, so, and then if I hit, hold down the, the middle wheel and hit shift, Oh no, let's see. Oh. And if you if you forget these uh, keystrokes, is it the um, all the buttons on the left hand side? If you um, forget the keystrokes? Well yeah, like uh, this is scale. Well, let's see. It's like the object. And that's this is scale. And this is rotate, and this is for moving it. And a little tooltip pops up and tells you, so that simplifies it. What if you want to like make a character in Blender, like a snowman or something? A snowman. Or well, a square man. <laughs> or a square, square man. man. A robot. A square yeah. snowman. Well, well, no. If you want to, uh, if you want to make a snowman. What, what you do is you uh, first get rid of the cube and you get rid of the cube by hitting the delete key. And that, that gets rid of that. And then you go up to the uh, add menu and then you go down to mesh and then UV sphere. Why do they have a monkey button? Oh yeah, well that's, that's pretty funky. That's, uh, let me show you that, that's, that's that's the monkey right there. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> and then, oh yeah. Also, what what I did right there was just to hit Control Z, like in many other programs. If you make a mistake or you want to, you want to undo something that you just did, just hit Control Z. Is mm -hmm. what you want. And also, like in other programs, you can hit Control C to copy, and Control V to paste. Um, so I have the ball selected here. We want to make a snowman. So hit Control C, then Control V. You see the color of the outline changed. And you hit select the blue arrow, and the ball goes up like this, which is the chest of our snowman. And let's say you want to make the. Let me see. I'm going to scroll around here. Everything lines up. And. Uh, hit the scale widget and uh, you can scale it down like that by clicking and dragging right there like that and then and then uh, and so if you want to make the head of the snowman you just select the second sphere and hit control c control v and then the move widget the up arrow. You need to have the body. You've got the butt and the body and the head. What's the head? Well, it's the middle part. And so then. Why stop it? Only have two bits. Hit scale again, and you can scale it right down. Have a head. Okay. Then you hit the widget here for moving, and so on. So, and so that's the beginning of the snowman. Mm. Um, but, um, and so, uh, something else, you, something else you can do in Blender is, well, let's say you want to render it. You want to render the image, go up to render, 
render image, which is pretty straightforward. Excuse me. And this is probably going, oh, there it is. Uh, we have a pink snowman. I don't see it. I think it's you don't still, see it. I think it's still loading for us, maybe. Okay. Or maybe it's different you're not, you're, not, you're not seeing it? Oh. No. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, but anyway, oh, we'll skip that then. And uh, so. So how do you know that, um, so you said the snowman like renders pink. So can you like apply like colors and, and stuff to this? Cause right now it's just looks white. Right, yeah. Well, if you wanna go up, go up here to the, this little icon right here, which is viewport shading. And that will give you the, that's what it looks like when it's running. Would you, is the pink, would you select it? Oh, that's for the light. Got it. So you yeah. don't, you change the color of the light, not the color of the balls. Exactly. Uh, yeah, right here, this, this light, I changed the pink. Mm -hmm. and so, and so maybe you're thinking, well, it looks kind of, uh, Blocky. Kind, of, kind of bulky or blocky or fragmented. So let's select that, select the top ball and then click the right button and go to shade smooth and that'll smooth it out for you. Ooh. Isn't that fancy? And then you go down to the second one, again, shade smooth. The third one, select it with the left mouse button and then shade smooth. And now we have a hmm. smooth. Nice. Smooth snowman. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> what else? Uh, oh yeah. So, uh, and if you want to save the project, you go file. Pretty basic. Save as. I don't know if you can see this, but a little. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And then you just, you know, uh, click to the directory you want to save it in, and click on the name of the file you want to save it as, and save it like. Snowman, hit save as. And I'm not going to save it. So he's gonna save. okay. So let's. Uh, Is it possible you could put in um, backgrounds from another source, like a JPEG? Oh yeah, um, yeah. There are different ways of doing that. Um, like if you, well, well, something I should, if you want to do, if you click on this, it'll toggle the camera view. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you see through the, when, when it gets rendered through the camera. And if you want to move the, the camera or the camera view, you select the edge up there, mm -hmm. or you can select the camera right there. And then you hit the G key and you can move it around like that. And you say you can center it. Oh, yeah. And so and it's something I do all the time. And um, so, but yeah, so if you if you want to add a one way to add a JPEG behind it is a, is a in, insert a, a flat plane and then rotate it 90 degrees and then put and then put the jack the JPEG on the plane. Or you can actually add it to the camera down here under background images mm -hmm. and then open that and add image and that will mm -hmm. that will show the image in the behind the snowman so um let's get out of uh camera view and um but oh yeah something <laughs> something else you should definitely know is the different modes like editing. Uh, right now we're in object mode. And um, okay. so let's say you want to do some, something funky like oh, click on the uh, middle sphere and let's put it back to flat shade and hit the pull down the middle mouse button and rotate and so you can uh, go hit the tab, either hit the tab key or go to this menu here and go down to 
edit mode and you can see all the points. Mm -hmm. And so this, this icon up here is for editing points. So you can grab a point and uh, you can do all the same thing. Well, you can like uh, select the move widget, select the arrow and the point will come out. <laughs> he's got an arm, kind of a pointy arm, but okay. And, uh, and you can do the same thing for his nose and, but um, uh, what else, but. And so then, it looks, uh, it looks like all these tools on the left then in edit mode, you can kind of protrude and change vertices depending on what tool you're using. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, oh yeah, all, there are, all, the, all these tools are um, for like a, a, a loop cut, cut, a bevel. They're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, okay, so it's all about shaping the shape. Yeah, extrude, knife. So when you're like working through a project, do you kind of start in object mode and then you move down to edit? Is it kind of like sequential like that? Depending yeah, on your- Yeah, usually, usually you start in, uh, Object mode, and then uh, select, you know, a, a very common kind of modeling is called box modeling, where you just start with a box and then you knife it and you subdivide it and push it and pull it until it starts looking like something like a car or something. And that's but you do actually start with the box, and um, so uh, uh, I, I, could, I could show you that if you want. I mean, it's but if, if you don't like the arm there, you just hit control Z and we'll just get, get rid of that. And, but another kind of selection is like the face. That square is for selecting a face, like right there. And once again, you pull on that and it comes out. And uh, so it's a more normal, well, slightly more normal looking arm. And, uh, <laughs> and then you can do things, well, uh, let me see. Well, a lot of times when you're modeling, you want to rotate it around like this and by holding down the middle mouse button to see different views. And, um, but, uh, let's see, I think that's about as far as we can go with our snowman here. Uh, so, are, are there existing objects that we can just import and start working with, like generic dog? No, just the monkey. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, you can, there, there are websites online where you can download, you can either buy or um, download for free mo pre-made models and you can modify mm -hmm. them. Like one very common one is uh, turbosquid.com. I've gotten models from there before. If you, if you don't feel like making a really complex model, you can buy a model right because probably some, sometimes you want to be experimenting with what you can mm. shape and sculpt and other times you want to just know what you can do with it obviously yeah. you can do that you can do that with a a square to a cube yeah well yeah i mean if your focus is on animation you may not want to make all the models so you can just download a model yeah and, and i was wondering speaking of animation things i heard that there are various effects on blender like smoke um how would you put those in Oh, well, that's, that's a little more complicated. That's uh, okay. So it, you'd have to design that it isn't like a smoke button or something. Well, that would be here. <laughs> okay. Under particle properties. Mm -hmm. Just basically. Um, but I mean, that's a little more advanced, but mm -hmm. it's particle systems. Um, and then uh, But uh, so So back back to the basics. Uh, go back, go to new, general. You can save it if you want, or I, I'm not going to save it. <laughs> and if you and so this, if you ever get stuck, you just go back to new general, and it'll take you right back to the basic setup with the basic light, the basic camera, and the basic cube. And uh, so, but if, so we. You're mentioning, uh, I was mentioning box modeling. If you want to go for that, what you do is you select a cube and then go up here to edit mode. And you can do things like loop cut. 
like that, which add, what it does is it adds geometry to it. And so you're just clicking. Mm. Yeah, I'm just dragging, dragging and clicking the loop. And then deselect it. And then so that adds all that geometry, which you can then manipulate by doing it just like we did on the snowman. And let's see, get rid of all this stuff. And then it's, uh, but then uh, if you want to see, uh, select the face, select, select the face and then hit the E key for extrude and that will extrude it in or out. That's very common. Um, and then you can you uh, combine tools. Like if you want to, you can combine the extrude, extrude with the uh, the scale. Click scale. Why is this not working? <laughs> Let me hit S. The S key always works. And then go back up up here to the move widget, and you get something like that. So that's that's basics, basics of modeling. But let's say you want to look at it from different viewports or different viewpoints. What you do is you go up here, the upper right, where it, and the cursor forms an X, and you drag it to the left. Drag it to the left. You see, it creates a new window, mm -hmm. like that. And this is pretty basic. Uh, and so also you can go down to the bottom and it forms an X again and you want to, well, those arrows is, is trying to uh, shrink the window back in, but we don't want to do that. Let me see. So when you made your, I think a week or two ago, you showed us your spaceship. Did you start that as a square and build no. it from this kind of thing or? Well, do you want? Um, I haven't seen the spaceship. You haven't seen the spaceship. Well, I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Um, oh, we still have half an hour, so we got plenty of time. So yes, but I just wanted to show you the different uh, views, like the if you go up here to view and viewpoint. Uh, viewpoint. Let's say you want the uh, top view that shows the top view and then view view viewpoint right or left and so what, whatever you do in any one of these windows uh, will affect what happens in the other windows it's the same object it's just being shown from different uh, points of view so if you go like this you'll see it being affected in the uh, the right orthographic view yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, so let's, uh, so that's, that's a basic overview of Blender. And so now we're going to go up to file new, back to general, save changes, don't save. Okay. So when you're making objects, then would you, like if I had a scene I was making, would I make, you know, like say I had a, a table and two chairs, would I make those three objects together in this space or would it be like separate files um well you can, you can make them all in the same space but what, what I, I like uh -huh. to make i like to make them in separate scenes and then then copy and paste them into the same scene or what you can do is just make one chair and then copy it and paste it and paste it multiple times and have a dining room set and, so yeah. how do you copy and paste from multiple files? Multiple times. Well, you just, just hit, like if you, like you want to uh, duplicate the cube here, just hit Control C. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let me see. Sorry, I just got a notification that our meeting might end in 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, and I have a timer for nine minutes counting down right now. Um, so I better so get boogie in there. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, uh, 
I'll get right into that. Yeah, that's my, uh, that's, I wasn't expecting that, but I could continue. I'm going to try and figure it out. Uh, okay, so you just, just keep hitting control V and then selecting and then moving and then control V again. You select and then you move. If, if the object was a chair, then you'd have four chairs. So it's a quick way of duplicating things. And uh, okay, so now go back up to file new general. So I guess, I guess we can dive right into the mountains. The mountains are fun. Uh, so, but first thing is to, like I, I mentioned about the windows, go down here to the where it forms an X and drag up. Let me see, drag. No. I think what I'll do if we get kicked out is I'll just restart the meeting. That shouldn't, that'll be fine. Oh. So we'll just wait and see what happens and then I'll just reopen it if we get kicked out. I'm sorry oh, okay. about that. Oh, why is this not working? Let's see here. All right, well, maybe up here. Okay, so we've got this here. There's kind of a funky sound effect happening in the background. Okay, so uh, so to create the uh, the mountains really quick, what you do is to hit delete to get rid of the cube. And you go up to add mesh plane. And you can hit the scale widget over there. And then you go in here and you just make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, uh, and then you select it. And uh, go into edit mode. Uh, edit mode. Okay, and then uh, <clears throat> what you want to do is you want to uh, oh, right click and then hit subdivide. Then. Subdivide, then do it again and do it six times. Subdivide, right click, subdivide, right click, subdivide. One more time, right click, subdivide. And then, um, and then what you want to do is you want to go up here to this little icon right there, which is, you see the tooltip pops up, it says proportional editing. It is not doing it. It's not doing it. Yep, no, nope, ours is not doing it. Well, it's not subdividing? Nope. We've done it once. It has not done it again. Or well, you, you could, uh, let me see. Let me see. Actually, I haven't done it at all. Let me see, add mesh plane. Try it again. Um, select it. Go into edit mode. You can go up to edge. Edge. Oh, no. Like that. I did have it. Is it working now? Well, it did it like twice and now it's not doing it again. It's not doing it again. Oh, now it did it. If you do it very quickly, it brings up a, do you want to make this a favorite? Um, hmm. Add quick favorites. Oh, yeah, I, I don't get that on my computer, so I don't know. Um, there might be something you can disable, maybe if you just downloaded it. It's like maybe a preference thing. Well, um, well it, yeah. like Microsoft, like with my um, Wacom tablet, is uh, like if I right click, like more than like three times, it's a, it 
it basically brings up a thing of, oh, do you want to make this a quick, and it's like, no. Yeah. Okay, so I think just, if you can, just keep edge subdividing it. Edge subdivide. Edge subdivide. Edge subdivide until you have lots and lots of points. And then you scroll in and um, you go up to uh, proportional editing and activate it. And then you go to the drop down menu next to it and you have a choice of different types of proportional editing. We're going to choose random down here. And so, and so now I just, I just clicked on the uh, outside the plane there to deselect everything. And uh, what you want to do is, you know, it's up here, it's in point selection. So you want to select a point like that right there. Then you want to hit the G key, G for grab. And, oh, and there's any, oh. so you hit like G. Well, a good thing to do is to hit the G key and then the Z key and that, that will con, uh, constrain it to the Z axis like that. And if you scroll the middle mouse button, you get a wider range there. And uh, so let's see, then and you can do it as many times as you want and hit G again and before you click off this, will you uh, show us what it looks like from the camera perspective? Yeah. Sure. Like that. And um, so, uh, what else? So, so we're, we're, we might get kicked off, but then I'll reopen mm -hmm. oh, okay. this meeting. So, we'll see what happens. <laughs> and then, uh, so, but then if you want to, but not, not only can you raise the uh, terrain, but you can also hit G and lower it like that. Mm -hmm. And you can go up to uh, the options and hit smooth. And that's more interesting. Hit G and then bring it down like that. Mm -hmm. So you want to make like a lake or something. And, and and you can always uh, hit the uh, this the move widget here and go back and select any of these points and shape them and uh, customize the mountains like that or whatever. so that you're you're in object mode, but obviously this could this object could be a background. This is edit mode. This is edit mode. Okay, but yeah, that's but an object that you've created. It's an object that I created, but if you go okay. into uh, object mode, then it's, you get this. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, I can Is show this, you, no, go ahead. Can I ask you a quick question? Seems like you could create things in one scale, but then can you rescale each scene so that if you made one person, it could, it could be a giant person and if you combine it a certain way or a tiny person, at the bottom of the mountain and another combination. Oh yeah, yeah, you can, you can, um, I mean, all these tools apply to any object. So you can select, I mean, you could uh, create a person or import a person and select it and scale it up. Any more questions about the mountains or the, um, I mean, you could turn the depression here into a lake. But that's, uh, I'm sure you'll go over this, but what about like, um, like is this object, is it just gray right now as you're seeing it? Like what if we wanted to add like a color to it? Oh, oh yeah, that's. Uh... Or um, I'm sure you can add like, yeah, something like that. Um, how, do, how would that work? What's that? Oh yeah, like how would adding um, a color to it work? Right. Oh, yeah. I just uh, my computer is kind of slow here. I was just dragging up this window. Uh, let me see. Hit 
this out of the way. So yeah, so to add a color to it, what you do is I just open up this uh, sub window down here and you go up here to uh, shader editor. And so I could, uh, do, uh, so I, I guess we have like 20 minutes left. I could show you either how to make the airplane or how to make the gradient for the, the mountains. Do you want to see the gradient or the plane? Or? I also don't mean like how I don't know how hard it is to like animate and oh you you want to know how to animate? I don't know. I guess I don't know how hard that is. No, <laughs> I can show you how to animate. Um, uh, what other questions do people have? I guess what do people prefer to see? We have like twenty minutes left, so if if you could show, do you know how to do uh, like in text just text intros like um, like letters moving around the screen. Oh yeah, yep. Um, if but that that's something I was just interested in. But if if you want to show something else, that's perfectly cool. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. I, I guess uh, maybe the animating would cover that. Yeah. Like moving a camera. Yeah. I don't know if that's something you could apply to. Yeah, I could show you both the text and the animation separately, and then you can combine them on your own. I mean, it's pretty. I mean, you can apply any tool to any object, and the text is just another object. So, okay. So, uh, but anyways, to get back to Katie's questions, just really quick, we're in the shader editor, and you go up here to new, uh, and you get this guy down here. Well, this is a little more complicated. This is nodes, which is kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a while to get into it, but it's uh, once you get into it, it's very powerful. But if you hit like base color and make it green, and then you go up here, uh, let's see, that turns green like that. And it, there's there's an easier way to add color by going down here to the materials properties. And you see the color right there, you can change it there as well. As if, if you wanna avoid nodes, you can just go over here, which is what I did for a long time, but nodes are, very powerful. So, all right. Well, on on to editing um, or animating. Uh, let me see. Let's uh, let's go back to a new general. Save changes. Don't save. Uh, and so, if you go down here, the cursor changes the two arrows, and you drag up. And that is your timeline for animating. And um, I don't know what kind of objects you want to animate, maybe something more interesting than a cube. So delete that. Uh, add mesh. Let's animate the monkey. And so what you do to animate them is you use keyframes and um, Let's say you want to make them rotate around the z-axis here. Uh, what you do is, with your cursor in the uh, the viewport window, you hit the the uh, I key, and it says insert keyframe menu. All these options, and like if you're just changing the location, like the x, y, or z, then you hit that. If you're just rotating it, hit that, or any combination of location, rotation, or location, rotation, scale. Um, but we're just going to rotate it. So you hit rotate. And then, um, and then you drag it out here. Let's say you want to go to frame 80. You see, that's the keyframe right there that we have. And so now what you want to do is you want to rotate, rotate them. Well, you can rotate them around any axis. Uh, Let's rotate them around the Z axis. So you hit the rotate widget and the, the blue um, circle. And you can rotate like that. <laughs> and lots of fun. And then you go, and once again, you go up here, you put the arrow in the viewport, hit I again, and you hit rotation again. And there's a second keyframe there. So now he rotates. And it's just that simple. So if you go up here to the uh, um, 
playback controls, hit rewind, and then play, and you get them. See them playing like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so, and you can change the, uh, like the how, how many frames there are in the animation right now. They're at 250, and um, so. So that's pretty similar like basics, I guess, for how if anyone's done like keyframing in Premiere, you know, where you're selecting position or rotation, that stuff is all same concept, which is which is great. Yeah. Um, so could you do the same thing with the camera then? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just select a camera. Yeah, Katie, it's more like uh, keyframing in After Effects. OK, yeah, that, that's true. Okay, so the uh, go to the camera view. That's what we see right now. So if you want to, let me see. Um, let's uh, get out of camera view and go scrub on back to frame one. And if you select the monkey head, you see the the keyframe. Uh, it's still there on frame one. Oh, uh, but you want? Oh, can you can you see this here? My looks like my screen is sort of vanishing on the left. But if you want to, uh, if you want to animate the camera, what you do is you just uh, select it. And it's the same exact process. You just uh, uh, right now we're on. You can see we're on frame one right now, the current frame, and uh, which happens to be the start frame. And uh, so if you want to just like pan the camera around, Oops. what you do is hit, hit the, with the arrow in the viewport, hit the right button on the, what am I doing? Oh, uh, hit, hit the I button like we did before. And um, let me see. Uh, just sort of find, just sort of find, hit location, rotation, scale, and then uh, change the current frame to the I don't know forty, and hit tab. So now we're on frame forty, and uh, um, go back into the camera view. And so now we're going to move the camera around. And the way you do that is, well, it looks like the camera is selected. So you hit the, uh, hit the G key. And you can turn it all the way over to the right, like that. And then you can hit the R key and the Z key, like that. And Go like that to rotate the camera, and I don't know what that's. The camera was only the camera was moving, not this position. It's rotating around. The camera didn't move at all. The camera does not rotate. Only this is it. Go back to the other view. Go back to the default view. And so, can you play it? Can you play it back? And I was just waiting. I thought someone had a question. But so, what you do, what you do I, now is get I. So insert keyframe at frame 40, hit location, hit rotation scale again, and... But you don't always see this. This is the camera view. Uh, yeah, so that the landscape moves underneath it. I'm saying the landscape. Uh -huh. So now you see the camera's moving. Yeah. The camera pans. Well, you and uh, so, but I mean, you can do... You can do much more interesting things than that. I mean, you can, uh, but that's, if you want to go to frame 80 and then select the camera again and, all right, okay, here's, here's another feature. I'm just, I'm on frame 80 here. I, I've selected the camera. I'm going to move it around. I'm going to move it way up here. Unless, and, and if you go to camera view, you'll see, oh, it's still there. Okay. 
I'm going to hit the G key and focus it in like that and okay, then get out of camera mode. Then hit the I key, location, rotation, scale. And now you can see the camera moves. Like mm -hmm. And if you're in camera mode, you'll see exactly what happens. Okay. So that's. Uh, let me see. And then, well, I guess if you want to. to rotate it, just keep it a final position. So, no any more questions or is it Yeah, any more questions? I know, um, thanks John, that's, that's, that's great to, to really see. I didn't know how powerful it was. Um, I think we'll have a question about how to do, if it's possible to do like letters, like 3D letters and Julia, oh, yeah. Julia, did you have a question? You know, you're muted. Let me unmute you. Can scale what you usually do for um, videos? Say that again. Do you use location rotation scale as the default animation setting for videos, like camera view? So I moving the camera is what I well, mean. Well, yeah. Well, the thing is, is that if you... Uh, we go I'm saying you camera view. You can if, if you're just moving the uh, location, then you, then you just want to insert a location keyframe because... Mm -hmm. You want to minimize the number of keyframes you insert. If you if you hit location rotation scale keyframe, then it'll insert three keyframes: one for location, one for rotation, one for scale. So I want to minimize the keyframes. And but let me uh, go file new. Um, uh, I'll save. Click on the queue, hit delete. Then you go to add, uh, add text. Okay. And so now the text is lying flat. So what you want to do is you want to rotate it. So you hit the rotate widget. And you go like this uh, with the red circle up like that. It's not rotating. Now if you want to, then you go into edit mode real quick. And, that will, and then you hit backspace and that will allow you to type in whatever you want. Like, hello. Everybody, okay, all right, so. And then, uh, so if you want to, like extreme, if you want to make like a blocky uh, text, what you do is you go into object mode and you go to object and you go down to convert to mesh from curve meta serve text. Okay. And that converts it into an object which you can extrude. And, and so now if you go into edit mode, you see, it's been converted into an object which you can modify. And you can add colors to it. Um, and you can add textures to it and whatever you want. And, and you can rotate it the same way. Oh, let's see. Um, yeah. I didn't really go over selection too much, but uh, if you want to select everything or Let's see. So I select box select, and you go like this, and oh, it selects all that, and you can do all sorts of stuff with it. And now it's still selected, and you can rotate it, and so you can keyframe that, and and you can oh. move it like that. And so, and so it's just the same process for that we use for rotating the monkey, the monkey head. 
And um, so, that's, <laughs> so that is pretty much text. Thanks. Yeah. So when uh, so if we were seeing this, it would be just like hello, like it would be in black space kind of. So when you start to like have a scene, do you have to add like more lights to it and backgrounds and stuff? Uh, yeah. Um, or like, is one light enough? I guess. Well, it depends on what effect you want. I mean, you can it's, you can do the same. You can have the same rigs that you use in a, a TV studio or on a movie set, like three point lighting or um, back lighting or rim lighting, uh, whatever effect okay. you want. Um, so, but yeah, it's usually in most projects, uh, they you know people use more than one light. And um, and you said there are different kinds of lights, right? How do you do that again? You go click on light, and then. Uh, Click on the little light, green light icon. Oh. And then it, and you have the selection right here point, sun. So you scroll back, there's the sun, spotlight, area light, back to point light. And there's the color, we can change the color. And, um, so, and uh, and there are a lot of other controls too for the spotlight, like the radius of the spotlight and so on. But you know, and the power and the specular. Okay. Um, uh, uh, but basically, all I have to know really is point, sun, spot, and area. So. And then I know it didn't work before. So to just to see what it looks like, you would go to render image. Is what you did before. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I know yeah, it didn't but, work, but that was yeah, it worked on my machine, but it didn't work yeah. on Zoom. So okay. to render image, and then uh, a little it, a little uh, render window pops up, and then you can save the. Let me see. Uh, I'm just doing it right now, and then after the render window pops up, you go to the image menu and then save or save as and you can save the image. Okay. Yeah, we're not seeing that. But no. okay. That would and be the, the final step kind of. Final step, yeah. And then um and then there's render, render animation as well. Animation. Like if you want to render out the, the rotating monkey head, you would render animation. But also you would have to go over here to this little uh, printer icon and select the file format for an animation would probably be AVI. And then the output, you select the path and then by clicking on the folder and that's where your animation goes. <laughs> so that's, uh, and then there's the uh, frame rate right here. It's set to uh, 24 frames per second. And you can change that all around, and um, you can adjust the number of frames you want to render. Okay. Right now, it's still 250. So, yeah. And um, so, any more lingering questions? Or? So for adding additional lights, you just copy paste the light you had, right? Well, no, well, you can do that, but there's an easier way. You go up to add uh, light, and then like you can mm -hmm. want to point sunspot to one an area light, and it's the same tools for moving it. You just click on the arrow and mm -hmm. move it around, and, mm -hmm. and rotate it the same way using the rotate mm -hmm. like that and move it up and so on cool. and, and then uh so, um oops. any other questions there's obviously a lot of other stuff you can do <laughs> there's a lot of to look at yeah, right i'm now. interested in learning more now <laughs> Yeah, oh, there's good. so many other tabs in there. Um, um, lot, can you show us how to make the letters like a 3D, like a cube shape of the 
Well, like, well, what we do is you uh, ex extrude them. Yeah, I oh. think you missed that. Well, we did that. Um, oh, okay, think, sorry. Oh, it's okay. I think that was in, was that in edit mode, John? Yeah, uh, yeah, while well, you, uh, uh, you, you type in the text in edit mode and then you, then you go into object mode and you go up to uh, object, convert to mesh, it's already been converted, but you know, mesh from text. And then, and so now that, that now you can hit, uh, well, let's see. Go into edit mode. Like that. Uh, okay. I just hit the, just hit the E key to extrude it. And just drag it. Yeah, hit the E key then drag, and then um, so that can be like translated or rotated or scaled or all these these operations over here. Uh, like for go into object mode and you can hit. Scale and whoa, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, let's see, make it real big, or you can scale it around just one axis like that, <laughs> and you can make that a uh, make that an animation as well by keyframing it. John, this is great. How long have you been yeah. using um, Blender for? Oh, I guess about two years. Okay. <laughs> Is it okay if anyone has questions after this? Can I? Is it okay with you if I share your email to the people that came today for? Uh, yeah, sure, that's fine. Yeah. Both sure. questions, um, and I'll, I'll share this with other the video with other members and stuff. But um, well, this is great. Oh well, thanks. I'm glad. To... Thanks, John. Yeah, yeah, thanks, John. Glad you like it. Yeah. John, do you want to talk about your Blender meetup before we go? Oh yeah, that you're a yeah. part of. Yeah, I, I run the uh, the uh, Boston Blender Users Group um, on meetup.com. So just go to meetup.com and type in Boston Blender Users Group, and you'll find us. And we have a Facebook page as well. And and so uh, last at the end of last month, we had a uh, a meetup on Zoom, which I I did the demo and went pretty well. And then and someone else was giving the demo at the end of this month on Zoom. <laughs> And um, the demo at the end of this month is going to be on sculpting, but just very basic sculpting, though nothing uh, too intimidating. Um, and uh, so, a member named Christy is giving that demo. And um, so, yeah, if you want to join join the meetup group, that'd be great. And um, um, thanks for everyone for sh for showing up.